The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl, its handle unmarked. People call them both the six-shooter. Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment and the national broadcasting company, present Jane Stewart as the six-shooter, a transcribed series of dramas based on the life of Britt Ponson, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. Now, Act One of The Six-Shooter, starring James Stewart. a grandstand seat, a rocking chair on the front porch of the Temple City Hotel. Not that there was much to watch, a couple of women looking at the bonnets in the windows of Bradley's Mercantile and some kids playing mummy pig over in the alley next to the bank, and the checker game in the shadow of a big elm across the street. But it was a couple of days before I was due to pick up some cattle in Atterbury for Mrs. Pritchard, and, well, Temple City seemed as good a place as any to stop over. I was considering taking a little nap when I saw Will. At least that's who I thought it was. He was, he was coming out of the general store carrying a box of groceries. I, I couldn't be sure, though, because just as he started to climb into a wagon, another man rode up alongside and shut off my view. Well, look who's in town. You doing the marketing, Will? Thought the women usually did that. But I guess in your case, it ain't such a bad idea to switch things around. I was hoping I'd run into you, Temple. Two of my cows have been killed this week. You mean your wife's cows, don't you, Will? It wasn't two, it was three. The boys found another one grazing on my side of the creek this morning. You're going to have to do something about that fence of yours. You won't have no stock left at all. That fence was all right yesterday. Maybe. But this is today. Now, you listen to me, Temple. I'm... I figure it's about time you done the listening, Will. I want your wife's ranch. Ain't made no bones about it. She was willing to sell until you came along. She ain't willing now. I'll give you two dollars an acre. That's more than a fair price. Anybody will tell you that. We're not going to be shoved off that land, not for two dollars an acre or twenty. Then maybe I'd better talk to Sarah, seeing as how it's her property. No! No. I'm warning you. You stay away from our ranch and our cattle or I'll... Or, or I'll... Well, go on. Tell me what you'll do, Will. I'd be real interested to find out. Come on, Bill. It was Sarah giving him the warning. I might take it seriously, seeing as how she wears the pants in the family. The wagon moved in closer where I was sitting. I got a good look at him now. He changed a lot since last time we met up. He was older. There were a couple of those squint wrinkles between his eyes. Even so, he still could have been more than 23 or 4, seeing as how he was only about 20 when we worked on the West Star Roundup together. Hey, Will! Will! Hey, Will! I thought he'd recognize me, but I... Well, I guess I'd changed some, too. I wasn't getting aged or nothing like that, but I'd, uh, I'd ripened up a bit, I guess. Anyway, Will kind of glanced my way and then drove on. And from the way he was holding those reins, I had a pretty good idea of what he was thinking. This temple fella, he pushed him too far. And if I knew Will, he was getting ready to do something about it. Well, there was no point in trying to run him down now. We'd probably meet up later. So I went into the hotel and looked around for a place to sit down. The clerk behind the desk was playing a game of solitaire. Oh, how did this it? Something I can do for you? No, 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 thanks so. Room all right? Yeah, it's fine. Room's fine. Uh, real pleasure having you stand with us. Anything you'd like. Will you the, the Black Queen. Huh? The plays on the King of Diamonds. Uh. Oh. Oh, thank you. Like to look at the Denver paper? It just came in on the stage. No, no, thanks. Just the same. I, I was sort of figuring on a little snooze. A little too, a little too much racket outside. Uh. <laughs> I know what you mean. 
Noah Temple's got a voice that carries all right. I could hear him and Will arguing clear in here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Don't amount to nothing now, Mr. Ponser. They've been squaring off like that ever since Will moved to town and married Sarah Blake. Oh? Oh, looks like I'm stuck. Good thing I'm not playing at the gambling hall. I'd be out of 50 bucks. You see, Noah's got the idea of buying Sarah's ranch, and there ain't going to be no stopping him until he buys it. Will he need her land for any reason? Mm, sure thinks he does. Now, if I can just get me the ace of spades. And... Forty years ago, Noah's grandfather started this town. He owned all the acres between the foothills and the creek outside. Old Temple said it was named for him, as a matter of fact. Is that so? But the old man's son, Fred, well, he wasn't much good. First thing you know, he'd sold off nearly everything his dad had left him. When Noah took over, he swore he'd get all the Temple property back again. Guess it sort of stuck in his craw that the Temple's wasn't the biggest outfit in the valley no more. Dug on that black seven. How's Noah Temple been doing? Well, first folks didn't take him serious. They thought he was just a talker like his father. But he sure fooled him. Yeah, today he's got more acres than his granddaddy ever had. There's only one piece of the original Temple setup he ain't been able to buy back. That land of Sarah. Oh? It sure was a surprise when Will wouldn't let her sell it. Nobody ever figured he'd stand up to Noah. A man like him. Was well, there something wrong with him? Seven, eight, nine. What's that? Oh, well, you see, Mr. Ponte, Will's a coward. You see, as he's yellow clear through. He won't ever wear a gun. If there's a posse being formed, but he don't go along. And if there's a fight, he lays low. You can call him names, you can insult him. The way Noah Temple and he just takes it. Gee, that sure don't sound like him to me. You know Will, Mr. Ponson? Used to. Used to. A couple of years ago, we worked around up together. Oh, that must have been before he moved to Temple City. Yeah, yeah. It was down in Texas. Back there, Willie Techman wasn't afraid of nobody or nothing. And for a youngster, he's mighty fancy with a gun. Techman? That's right, yeah. Oh, but that ain't his name, Mr. Ponson. Will's name is Fetter. Oh? Yeah, Will Fetter. I no wonder you were surprised about him being yellow. You... You got the wrong man. Uh-huh. Well, they must look alike. This friend of yours and Will Fetter. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do, yeah. I went upstairs to my room, started to pull my boots off. You know, it's funny, I... I hadn't been doing anything but sit all day, and my feet hurt worse than I'd have been walking 20 miles. Oh. Oh. There. I looked out the window. That sun is just about even with the church steeple. I saw it be around 3 o'clock. Oh. I had a couple hours before supper, so I. Let myself down in a bed. Hmm? Yeah? Yeah? Well, come on in. Come on in. Mr. Ponsett? Oh, oh, well, oh, excuse me, ma'am. I, I didn't know it was a lady. I... I'm, I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Ponsett. Oh, not at all, not at all. I wasn't exactly what you'd call busy. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, wait, I'll get those boots out of your way. Mr. Ponsett, I'm Will's wife. Oh, oh, I'm pleased to meet you, ma'am. Will, Will told me you were in town today. He saw you. And you saw him, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. At least I thought I did. Well, you can't tell anyone he's here, Mr. Ponson. Oh? Uh-huh. You didn't come to Temple City looking for Will, did you? Will thought maybe that was the reason. We heard about what happened in Prescott last winter when you came across Bar Cleaver. Yeah, uh, well, you heard wrong, ma'am. I didn't come across Cleaver. He came across me. And as for Will, well, he... He's made a new life here. A good life. If he has to go back to prison... Prison? Oh. Well, you knew about the bank robbery in Austin and about him breaking out before... You, well, you knew, didn't you? No, ma'am. Oh, I haven't been back that way since... Then you... You, you wouldn't have told the marshal? But we thought... Well, we were sure. What have I done? Oh, 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 just take it easy, ma'am. Well, if I hadn't come to see you, nobody would have known he was Will Techman. Well, uh, you know, things have a way of coming out sooner or later. How much longer was Will supposed to serve? Two years. Uh-huh. 
Well, that's not so long when you're young. We're going to have a baby, Mr. Potts. But I almost wouldn't want to have him if he was going to grow up knowing his father had been in prison. Why should Will have to go back? Why? Well, I guess maybe you'd better ask the judge who sentenced him, ma'am. What I mean is they, they say it's so a man will live a decent, respectable life when he comes out. And Will's already living a decent, respectable life. He works hard. He, he never makes trouble for anybody. He doesn't even wear a gun, and he promised me he never will. Was that your idea, not wearing a gun? Before we were married, he told me about the trouble in Austin and how he broke out of prison. I suppose I, I should have made him go back. But I was so much in love, I couldn't. So I asked him to give me his word he'd never use a gun again, never even carry one. Well, it must have been kind of hard on a fellow like Will to keep holding himself back that way. It hasn't been easy. I've heard what men like Noah Temple call him. But Will takes it. He's kept his word. This uh, fellow Temple, you know, the way he and Will were going at it today, it sounded like they were heading for trouble. Won't be anything serious. Will just doesn't want us to be pushed off of the ranch. You can't hold that against him. No, 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 there's not. Then you... You won't tell the marshal over in Atterbury? Or anybody? Well, I don't imagine Marshal Sanders would like me mixing into his business. This is his district. I guess he can take care of it. Anyway, he has so far. But now, look here, oh, I... Thank you, Mr. Ponson. Well, thank well, now, you. No, uh... And thanks for Will, too. Well, no, well wait, wait, just, uh, wait, uh... Well, after all, you know, most of what she said was true... Sending Will back to prison might do more harm than good. But... And it wasn't up to me to sit judgment on him. I was going to be leaving town up there, so anyway, and if anything happened after that, it wouldn't be my concern. So, Of course, uh, a man does have certain duties, even if he's not wearing a badge. Uh, a man who spots a wanted criminal, he's supposed to report it. And I always had before. I scraped some of the mud off my boots and washed my face, put on a clean shirt, and went downstairs in the lobby. The clerk was still playing solitaire. Just beat myself again, Mr. Ponson. I was playing in the gambling hall. I'd be ahead about $140. Pretty good for one afternoon, eh? Yeah, yeah, real good. About time for supper? Yeah, go right on in. Molly will fix you up. Got baked ham tonight. Fine, fine. Oh, say, uh, uh, Mr. Ponson? Yeah? Remember us talking about Will Fetter and him being afraid to carry a gun? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, the darnest thing just happened. Oh, it wasn't any more than 15 minutes ago, I guess. Everybody's talking about it. He went into Bradley's Mercantile and he bought himself a carbine. Oh? Uh-huh. Of course, he's just trying to bluff Noah Temple. Folks are giving 10 to 1. Will don't even know how to load a rifle. <laughs> Where you going, Mr. Bradley? Dining room's over there. Uh, I guess maybe I'm not hungry yet. Say, uh... Whereabouts is Will's ranch? I think maybe I'll take a little ride. Maybe work up an appetite. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponson. was about two miles south of town, and from the outside looked neat and comfortable, well kept up. The ground stretching out behind it was good grazing land, though it was worth at least five dollars an acre, maybe more. I tied Scar to a cottonwood in the yard and walked up to the door. Home, Will. Oh, Mr. Ponson. Evening, ma'am. Come on in. Uh, Will's not here? No, he was gone when I came back. He must be out tending the stock. Uh huh. What's wrong, Mr. Ponson? You haven't changed your mind, have you? Where's the uh, Temple Ranch live from here? 
It's all around us. All four sides of our land. On Temple's ranch house. Where's that? East. Dewey. But what's that got to do with it? What's happened? Will was in town this evening. He bought a rifle. I don't believe it. He promised me. You're wrong, Mr. Ponsett. Will isn't gunning for Noah Temple. He's out tending stock. Well, he'll be home any minute. You'll see. Maybe. Where are you going? I hear Temple's got quite an outfit. Worth paying on a visit. You won't find Will there. He gave me his word he'd never use a gun again. You won't find him! <laughs> I headed due east for about a quarter of a mile, and uh, when I came to the edge of Will's property, I saw a sorrel tethered to a fence post. Looked like Will had decided to go the rest of the way on foot, so I climbed out of the saddle and looked around. There was a big break in the fence, but the cattle hadn't made it. That barbed wire had been cut. And there were four heifers and a couple of steers lying just over the temple boundary. Well, there just wasn't much question about it. They'd been shot. So I crawled through the opening and went right past a big sign that said, Temple Ranch, trespassers will be shot. I found some footprints. I figured they were Will's. About 30 minutes later, I caught sight of the ranch house. It was built about halfway up the side of a pretty steep hill, big, sprawling building. There was a light inside, and I could just barely make out Noah sitting at a desk working on some papers. But where was Will? He had plenty of time to get here. And I heard a step and swung around. There was one of Temple's hands pacing up and down near the stable alongside the house. The way he was holding the rifle, it looked like an army sentry instead of a cow hand. All of a sudden, he gave a little gasp. I saw a shadow tighten around his throat. The sentry went down, and there was a struggle. Not very noisy, though. Not noisy enough for Temple to hear it. And then everything was quiet. The shadow stood up. It was Will Tackman. He was inching his way toward the house, toward the window where Temple was sitting. I came up behind him. I pulled out my gun. He was starting to aim his rifle. Well, drop it, Will. Yeah. I might have known you'd turn up. Give me your rifle, Will. Could get off a shot. At me, but not at Temple. Temple gets our ranch and I go to prison, is that it? We'll talk all about that as soon as we get back to your place. Now, come on. I carried Will's rifle and led the way. About 20 minutes later, we passed another one of Temple's guards. He was dozing, didn't notice it. We still had a couple of miles to go before we'd reached the fence where we'd left the horses. Will was sort of panting for breath. All right, let's rest a minute. Okay. I thought you promised your wife you'd never take up a gum again, Will. Mr. Ponsett, I... You see them dead heifers over by the fence? Yeah. That about wipes I heard of. I found them, I... I had to do something. As long as you knew who I was anyway, as long as I was going back to prison, I had to fix it so Sarah wouldn't have the ranch taken away from me. Ah, you, you wouldn't think a piece of land would be worth everybody getting so excited about. I've been shoved around, Britt. Ever since I was a kid, I've been shoved around. Even when I held up the Austin Bank, I wasn't the one who... The one who what? Nothing. Nothing. Since I married Sarah, well, I've had to take a lot that other men wouldn't put up with because of her and because of her knowing what I was. This thing with Temple got under my skin. I made up my mind to stand up to him. A man's got to take a stand sometime, somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry, Will, but... Hey, what's that? Get down, Will. Yep. We've got your dead to rights, brother. Trespassing. I ain't alone, Temple. Britt, 
Ponce is with me. Ponce? That's right, Temple. I might have known better wouldn't come along. I like just four of us can take care of two of you. He won't be much use to you, Ponce. Not enough fight. Okay, boy, move in. I could see one of his boys firing from behind a tree behind him. So I aimed at his arm. And the bullet hit him on the shoulder and he lurched forward. I'd met only three of them now, but they were close. Will still didn't say anything. He was waiting for me to make the next move. I tossed him the rifle. Thanks, Brett. He got to his knees and started across a little clearing. He was still all right when he died behind a boulder. I knew where he was heading, too. Noah Temple had been shooting from behind a clump of pines about 50 yards back. For a couple of minutes, I didn't get a chance to watch him. Temple's two guards were on either side of me now. Well, one of them was more than eight, ten feet away. And I saw the barrel of his car being rise up from behind the bush. <laughs> and only one guard left. About that time, it seemed like he'd had enough. Anyway, I moved across the clearing toward the pine trees where Will had disappeared. Pulled up behind a rock. Well, there was Noah Temple. Crouched down low, his gun ready. A little bit of movement in the brush caught my eye. It was Will. He was right behind Temple. And Temple didn't know it. He was looking my way. Will had a perfect shot. I saw Will's finger curl around the trigger. But Will didn't fire. I couldn't figure out what got into him. He didn't fire. And then he threw his rifle to one side and let out a yell. Temple! Temple turned and got off a shot. <coughs> well, he was surprised he couldn't do much aiming. And then Will was on top of him, twisting the gun out of his hands. And after that, I saw a fight the like of which I'd never seen before in my life. There, Will hit Temple across the face and he went over backwards. And then Temple kicked and his foot lifted Will right off the ground. But before Temple could pick himself up, Will, Will was right on top of him again. And Temple tried to reach for his gun and Will brought his boot right down on Temple's hand. Temple quit reaching. And then Will backed away and let Temple up again. And as soon as Temple was steady again, Will drove his fist right into Temple's stomach. And Temple's hand flew apart and he was wide open. Will hit him again and hit him, hit him again and again. And finally, finally, Temple managed to, to send his fist into Will's face. And Will looked like maybe he was going to go down, but he still had a fight left to, to land a right that snapped Temple's head right back. And it was Temple that toppled over. And then I knew he wasn't going to get up again, not for quite a while. Feel better, Will? Yeah. Yeah, that's better. You had your chance to kill him. You had a perfect shot. You didn't have to fight him this way. It's the only way I could fight him, Brett. Huh? I had him in my sights. Something kept me from pulling the trigger. Maybe you'll think I'm crazy, but I, I kept remembering what I'd promised Sarah. I wouldn't use a gun again. I couldn't pull that trigger, Brett. I just couldn't. Uh-huh. Well, let's... Let's see if we can't get Temple here to a doctor. You know, it looks like he needs one. We left Noah with the dock in Temple City, and I started off for Atterbury. I've, uh, I've made up my mind to tell the marshal about Will, all about him. Sarah and Will, they agreed. They, they, they think I should, too. But then again, the way I see it right now, the state of Texas is looking for a gun-toting bank robber named Will Techman, and I... 
I just don't think Marshal Sanders would be very much interested in a law-abiding rancher who's called Will Fetter. The Six Shooter. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture Thunder Bay. Others in the cast were Michael Ann Barrett, Herb Ellis, Howard McNear, and Will Wright. The Six Shooter is an NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions, and it is based on a character created by Frank Burt, and today's transcribed story was written by him. Special music was by Basil Aslam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. <laughs>